Uh, I'm Eric Carson. E-R-I-C is the first name. K-A-R-S-O-N is my last name. I work with American Cinema Group and Guerrilla Pictures here at the world famous uh, American film market. Kelly for Live Video Inc. and Actors Reporter, and we are at the 34th Annual American Film Market and continuing our tradition of speaking with Eric Carson. How are I'm, you, sir? I'm great, Kurt. I, I see you around town periodically. It's not as often as I'd like. Last time I saw you was at that... Uh, Warner Brothers screening. Yeah, that Warner Brothers screening on the lot with uh, that Christian Slater... Sophia Skya Sophia picture. Sophia Skya picture, yeah. that's right. I promise. Get up. And you were going to take her and put her in a film. We got to still make that happen. That's going to happen. It's going to happen. Oh, it this, is this coming spring. Really? Uh, called Team B. Yes. Well, what's what's my part in this film? <clears throat> well, we yeah, need, well, uh, we need uh, yeah. a uh, news announcer, so okay, we'll I, show up. Oh, uh, you're typecasting again. Uh, well, you're good at it. Okay, good, good, good. So, Eric has done 7,000 films now. Yeah, well, almost. Okay, almost. quite a few. But you've worked with legends in action films. It's It's been a good run. I've had uh, Chuck Norris, of course. Yes. And did his Jean Claude first Van Damme. Jean Claude okay. Van Damme. Let's name drop now. Uh, Ashoka Shogi. Uh, Don Wilson, those kinds of uh, action people, but those are the those are the action films I do. I've done a lot of dramatic pictures. I've done television. So you really are a romantic guy. Yes, I am. I had heard that rumor around town. In comedy. From your brother, actually. Low comedy. Low comedy. Low comedy. What is low comedy? Low budget comedy or low no, comedy? No, just low comedy. Is this a new genre? No, broad laughs, drop the pants, pie in the face, uh, that kind of. Oh, you know, kind not, of like Mel Brooks stuff. Yeah, okay. not sophisticated stuff. <laughs> Mel, you're not sophisticated. No, no but he's rich. <laughs> Absolutely, all the way to the bank. Um, so, what is this next project you're working with Sophia Sky on? Uh, I, I know we talked about it that day when we are doing the interviews. You're actually following up. I'm, I'm excited to hear that. Yes, well, some of us do. Some of us do. In this town, that's rare. Yes, yes. I, I understand. A lot uh, of talk. It's called Team B, and yes. uh, it's, it has... It is going to have a comedy bent to it. Okay. It's a satiric or comedic comedy bent. Action picture. It, it has uh, leanings toward uh, the expendables, that kind of uh, thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, it should be high action and good comedy. And okay. We, uh, She's doing comedy. For the best. Uh, we're going to try and do wow. that. Wow. Uh, but be it's an mostly situation. Right. Situation. So the uh, the right situation, I'm sure she can pull it off. Now, would she be dancing in this film also? Because obviously she's very accomplished at dancing. Not planned for this. Okay. But she does have Darn. the tight leather outfit, and you see uh, her great uh, physical abilities and fighting abilities. So, so there will be action in this. Oh yes. Oh, this is an action comedy. Yes. Exactly. Is that a new genre? Action comedy. No, it's as old as the hills. <laughs> wow. Oh, yes, Mel Blurick's Blazing Saddles, I guess. So, um, this will start production this coming spring? Yes. Is no. this being shot in Russia? No, no, it's being shot in uh, a number of exotic places. Des Moines, Iowa. Poppy, Papua New Guinea. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? Chicken Breath, Nebraska. Oh, nice, yeah. nice, nice. Top and a bee. Yeah, yeah. Okay, all good, those, good, all good. All those places. All those high budget places. Yes, and uh, we'll shoot a bit in Florida and uh, do the interiors in Hollywood. Oh, so part will be done here and part yes, in Florida. Yes, indeed. And it really is being shot all over. Yes, it is. Um, can we shoot part of it in my hometown? Which is? Uh, Sheboygan, Michigan. It's a big, thriving metropolis in the middle of nowhere. For you, Kurt, I'm going to try and work okay. again. <laughs> okay, Sheboygan, I told you I'd bring a film home deal. Uh, so, are you excited to do this? Because yes, it's been a while since you've done something like this with beautiful women. It I mean, a uh, film like this. Yes, uh, thank you very much. <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> 
No, it is. I've been an executive for the last uh, five years. I uh, directed a picture about five years ago. Yes. Uh, and uh, when you're when you're a uh, an executive, you supervise production, you supervise distribution, and so on. So you're talking but as an executive the, producer, executive in business. Which you, executive were you? Okay. I've, 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 both, I've done both, and I've been doing that for the last five years here. And now it's time to go back to what never stop doing what got you into the business. And I was a director and a writer, and uh, I'm going back to that because I love it. Right. And the opportunities are there. Oh, I'm congratulations. Take yeah. So um, are you working in more than one project simultaneously right now, or are you just staying just focused still, on this one? I still have my contractual obligations as an executive. Right. Uh, and Is this uh, with that pictures company we know about? Uh, with American Cinema Group. Okay. Right. And uh, what I'm going to do is uh, I, I have the opportunity, I have a non-exclusive deal with them, but I mm -hmm. do have a responsibility to them. So I will continue that and uh, step out, and uh, they know that I'm going to do this, it's no secret. Uh, so course, moonlighting's allowed? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Be, being here, it's not, obviously not a secret anymore. <clears throat> no, we weren't talking about that. Yes, pay no attention to what that man says. Yes. So, over the years, you've worked with icons in the action film industry. In the tradition of the great ones. I'm Eric Carson. I love action. And it's probably not a fair thing to do, but everyone who interviews everybody sooner or later does that to you anyway. So why should I be the exception? Who is your favorite? Thank you very much for that. <laughs> yes. Oh, really? You had to ask that one again. <laughs> Do you have favorites? Would that make it easier? You no, know, I, I, I would. They were all favorites. You no, know, I would say they're they're like your children. Yes. You know, they're like they're like your well, children. Well, a lot of actors are like children. Well, let's not go into that. Okay. But but uh, you don't have favorites in that case. You, okay. You support all of them. You enjoy each of them for their strengths, and, and you try and help with any weaknesses, uh, and make it the best it can be for them. Were there some, without naming the other side of that question? Were there some that were amazingly easy to work with who just every time seemed to, when you said something, the light went on, bam, it was there? Because uh, I'm sure there were. I, I'll, I'll give you two examples. Uh, uh, Chuck Norris. Coming soon, the 30th anniversary digitally remastered edition of the Octagon. No one will admit they still exist. A prisoner of his own destiny. <laughs> He will find freedom only one way. You don't torment me anymore, Sakura. Chuck Norris, Karen Carlson, Lee Van Cleef. The Octagon. I, he I was, thought he would see. First making his films. Uh, Before he had say, too many bumps. Yeah. Okay. We we have a problem with the camera angle. So could you help us out here? He would change the choreography. Would nice. make everything work because he was very interested in the film being successful. Right. Uh, and uh, being the best it could be. Uh, Jean-Claude Van Damme, I did his second picture with him, a Black mm -hmm. Eagle. I'm hit! I'm hit! Raphne, where are you? I can maneuver, but I'm losing power. Losing power. A jet fighter is missing in the Mediterranean. Black Eagle. is the new front line. Will against will. Force against force. One on one. Show Kasugi. Jean-Claude Van Damme. Black Eagle. And the Big first, film. The first take that he did, I watched him and I went, oh boy, this guy's going to go a long way. You know it immediately, you sense it immediately. Mm -hmm. It is amazing. So, right. uh, those two guys were interesting in that in that genre. I mean, I've, I've directed Sir Anthony Quayle, Charlton Heston, and so on, but in the action genres, those are the guys that really impressed me. Now, uh, Charlton uh, 
wasn't parting the Red Sea at that time. He, it was after he had done that. How was he to work with? Perfect. Really? Yeah. He, okay. He was to be on the stage at 9 o'clock. He walked through the door at 9 o'clock, not 8.59, not 9.01, 9 o'clock. Uh, on time. On time. Knew his material. There were changes in scenes. He would walk around behind the, the psych, and he would come out the other side and say, I'm ready to do this. That fast? Really, that quick. Wow. He, yeah. Amazing. That's an art. Uh, it's, it, it is astonishing. I was working on a picture, um, and... Uh, I had one actor that they gave him a rewrite of a three-page monologue, right. and within a half an hour, he was ready to go. That's impressive. Yeah, having having had to memorize scripts in my lifetime, that's impressive to me. Yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Uh, it, it is it is really an art because at that point, you're having to totally shut off all the noise in your head, which for everybody that's sometimes harder than not. Um, and capture what somebody else's essence is and deliver it as if it's your own. Well, that, that, the character I was talking about, the actor I was talking about, was Walter Matthau. Really? Yeah. How yeah. very nice. Which film? Uh, it was, uh, they ch I can't remember, they changed the title of it several times. Kind of uh, like they did with uh, Sophia Skye's film, which you know, started oh, as yeah. White Swan, oh, yeah. and I'm not even sure what it ended up as. Yeah, the White Swan, not the Black Swan, the White Swan. Yeah, but they changed it even after that. It there became something is. else. I it, don't happens, it happens to pictures all the time. I've well, like The Butler was a yes. current, recent example, because Warner Brothers wouldn't let go of the title, and so they had to make it Lee Daniels, the but we I did a picture that was released by Universal in the United States called Lionheart. But if you go to France and you say, uh, you produce Lionheart, they go, oh yes, they kind of smile and they're nice to you. You say, well, oh, I'm sorry, uh, Leon the Street Fighter. <laughs> <laughs> they think they can get away with murder. This is gasoline. But they didn't count on one thing. Does he have any other relatives? Anyone else that could possibly help? Who gave up your family when you joined the Legion? I never give up my family. He's trained to fight for his life. Now, He's fighting for revenge. Now what's it gonna be? You lose. You die. It's going to be simple. Van Damme is... Be careful which country you're in and be sure you have your title straight. Well, and that's something that I think a lot of younger filmmakers don't understand, and, and for that matter, maybe older filmmakers too, that today it's so easy to find out. Yes. Just type it into a computer and search. Um, because maybe that original idea isn't quite that original. And they all come up. They absolutely will. They do. And, and if it doesn't come up, then grab it quickly if that's what you really want to do. And it, it makes it more difficult to lie in the business. Really? A lot of people... <laughs> people do that? To, no, I'm sorry. To, wow. yeah, yeah. Well, you know when the producer's lying, right? Their lips are moving. Uh, Have you heard that before? <laughs> sure. That's why I write everything. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> wow, I know I've never... I thought that was lawyers. Well, them too. Okay. But they learned it from the producers. <laughs> I thought it was the other way around. No, See, no. That's, okay, interesting. Uh, so what has changed over the years from filmmaking when you were beginning to, to today? What is some of the notable changes you've seen, for the better or otherwise? Speed and cost. Speed and cost. And you're not talking about the movie speed? No, 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 no. no. Wouldn't, let's not go. Okay. Uh, the, it, it is so simple today. It yes. used to be very tedious, very difficult. Looping lines. ADR, auto, you know, the automated dialogue replacement, all those things took weeks of preparation. Now right. you walk in and do it. Literally. The, the digital world has absolutely changed. You used to have, when you dubbed a picture, you had 50 cases of 35 millimeter magnetic tape. Right. Now you walk in with a hard drive in your hand. Nice. You see, you know, and so it's making it uh, much easier. 
much, much simpler to do. Mm -hmm. uh, that is a major change, and the cost has gone down dramatically. Not necessarily for stars and for big production, but you can do many things very cost-effectively today, astonishingly. Mm -hmm. And that, that's, that's the big change. That's the big change. It's, it's democratizing the uh, film industry. However, the, the bad side of that is that we have an incredible number of really bad motion picture makers. We can't say film anymore, Kurt. You've got to be careful about that. Even yeah. the film market, see, after January, there's not going to be any more film in the theaters, period. So what are we going to call it, the American? Motion picture and television. Oh. Although the television people will probably complain that, hey, our pictures move too. American motion picture and television market. That right. seems like a long acronym. Well, it is. It yeah. is. But when you say film market, they'll say, oh, you mean the old, the old movies. Because the new movies are all digital. Good point. Okay. That, that's that. Point taken. I don't know if the American film market people have gotten that memo yet. No, they would probably scoff at that. But I, I can't even write it in emails anymore. Well, it is interesting, though, people still go to the movies. Movies is okay. Yeah, and, and that probably won't change. A movie will still be a movie. Um, yes, it will. Yes, it's a motion picture. Look, see Dick Run. Yeah, there are, there, but television, as you say, has moving pictures also. And yes, now, yes. now people have cameras that used to take stills that will also shoot video, so... Where do you draw that line? And that's today. Don't blink. In five minutes, we'll change it again. I understand. The technology will change. And that's that's one of the big... Uh, it's hard to keep up with it. It used to be difficult. Now it's almost impossible. Well, in the distribution channels, before you had, like, you know, XYZ players to go to. Mm -hmm. Now people are becoming stars on YouTube. Exactly. Exactly. But... Uh, I don't think they're making too much cash. Yeah, them. they're probably not paying somebody a $20 million fee to show up in a YouTube video. No. Yeah, good point. So uh, this project you're doing with Sophia, you start shooting in the spring. What's the intended release date? Will we be seeing release for this next fall? Probably this be looking at it, um, I would say, at the AFM. You'll start to see promotional we'll things. It'll be, be available. About. Usually a, a film, uh, excuse me, a motion picture. Yes. A feature motion picture. Or a digital moving picture. Yes. Yeah. Is like a baby. Yes. It takes nine months to have the baby born and you dress it up for the last quarter. It mm -hmm. takes about a year from concept to delivery. Well, and that's what I think a lot of younger people or people not in the industry, and that's not a shot at anyone, they don't really conceptualize that something that they're watching today actually may have started as much as two to ten years ago and the ten years being they had to take you know eight of it getting people to believe in the concept and the other two to get it done and out to market yeah, they you you have to stay that's a general rule but you really have to stick to that because i must say the triangle of truth rules motion pictures good fast and cheap you can pick any two not all three. Right. It doesn't work. And that's pretty true also for television, though. You know, stuff that's being developed now, uh, we won't see on television until next year sometime. Right. Uh, people start putting together their pitches for next year um, for stuff that may be hitting next fall, this fall. They're spending more time. They're being more diligent. Uh, it's, it's astonishing the, the quality that you're seeing on the big screen at home television right. is is exponentially better. Absolutely is. No question about it. Television used to be master, over the shoulder, close up, lunch. You know, <laughs> that was it. <laughs> yes. No, they didn't care. Yes. You know, get it done. Nah, it's TV. Yes. I've had so many directors say, hey, it's just television. You know, right. You know, and that's a wrong attitude, of course, but the material that's on television, which is for grown ups, wonderful. Well, and if you look at some stuff that, oh, it's just television, some of it has become classics that are still around the Lucille Ball show, still airs today. Four times a day in Los Angeles. Right, and that's just on one channel. Yeah, where's so, the other show? <laughs> so, exactly. Truly a pleasure to see you again. Always good to see you, Kurt. Thank you. Yeah, and, I, and I look forward to seeing what's going to happen with you and Sophia. We'll see you next year. Absolutely. See you next year. And we are with Eric Carson, who is... 
a legend in my mind and yours too. Go look at his IMDb. We'll be back with more from the 34th annual American film market or the American movie market. No, it's the American film market at AFM in Santa Monica, California. I'm Kirk Kelly for Live Video Inc. and Actors Reporter. We'll be back with more in a moment.